Hey guys, it's Brayden, another day, another do-it-yourself video. Today we're doing a radiator, replacing a radiator on E90, automatic transmission. Uh, a lot involved here. Um, I'm going to show you the standard procedure, but uh, then I'm going to give you guys a lot of tips and tricks on how to do uh, DIY style a little bit. There's a bleeding process afterwards, which requires a battery charger. I'm going to um, just lead you guys through the whole process. I'll show you the tools and let's get started. First thing we're going to do when the car is cooled down, of course, is loosen the cap on the reservoir. Pay attention to the arrows pointing towards each other. They tell us where we need to be after we tighten it back up when we're finishing. Next, these are supposed to be plastic rivets here. We'll use our rivet prior and remove the rivets. Also remove these two T20 Torxes here as well. The air duct comes loose and we remove that. That'll loosen up this air duct. And then we remove these two 10 millimeter bolts holding the air filter down. Also loosen up this six millimeter clamp a few turns to free up the other side and pull out the mass airflow connector as well. And to do that, grab your rivet puller and slide it under the tab carefully, just enough to release it from the notch underneath it and pull the connector out. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to get this entire thing out. I like to remove the whole thing at once. I'm doing all this one handed mind yet because I'm filming for you guys but carefully pull the duct out up and past the body framework like so and now you're gonna grab a good hold of the air box lift it up from this end carefully twist it back and forth a bit to loosen it up and pull the whole thing out here's a close-up of where the radiator was leaking from in this case you can see the crack running along the top of the upper radiator hose Next, we got to get underneath the car and remove the splash panel and stuff so we can drain the coolant like a responsible person, contain it for recycling. And it also makes for a cleaner, mess free, no coolant on the ground or your face kind of job. To do that, we find the jack point, which is deep under here. It's a rectangular piece of metal. See the hole in the splash panel is a five inch wide rectangular metal jack point inside it. I'm shining my flashlight on it. Then raise the car so the wheels are off the ground at least four or five inches and Place your jack stands. When I place the jack stands, I like to place them a little towards the rear of the jack pad because the car tends to sit back on its butt a little bit when you're lowering it, depending on how high you start from. All right, now that we got the front of the car raised up and safely on jack stands, it's time to remove the giant underbody protection panel. Let me show you all the screws here. Keep in mind it would be significantly more difficult to do this job if you wanted to avoid raising the car up in the front a little. You'll see why soon. There's two here. So there's 15 8 millimeter screws. Three up front, two on each side, and two headed towards the back in the middle here. Look, a little spider hanging out. Only good reason to wear gloves. And then there's two more on each side of the jack point another giant more bigger spider I'm gonna let him be but if he's any bigger than that I'm step on him upside down and then there's four more screws in the back I'm getting out of here before we drag the coolant pan underneath we have to remove two brackets and another panel before we can access the drain plugs there's two drain plugs on this radiator pay attention to the arrangement of these brackets before you remove them and pay attention to the how the panel slides up underneath the radiator as well after the brackets full, this panel here slides out towards the rear of the car. And you can see one of the blue drain screws here, but but this car was overheating. I'm not sure if that compromised the quality of the drain screws, but both of them cracked immediately on me and the screw heads wouldn't come out. They just turned endlessly. So I had to, you can see here I'm not done yet, but I had to take a 19 millimeter and loosen the plastic plug adapter thing holding the screws about 60 degrees go slowly and then evenly pry out the adapter plug and careful a bunch of coolant will come splashing down have your drain pan ready after the coolants drain from both sides of the radiator next we'll remove this 
impossible to access from the top screw, which holds the oil cooler to the fan shroud, T25. And now let's unplug the connector to the fan. Squeeze like so, pull it out, sort of. And this return coolant line is really delicate. Be careful, but we got to remove it from its snaps evenly, like so. Again, I'm doing all this one-handed for you, but on both sides of the shroud, and follow it up to the reservoir, pry that clip up a little to release the hose, pull it off, and move that out of the way very carefully. It's prone to breaking at the other end. Um, uh, move any wires out of the way first. Um, there's a zip tie we want to cut holding the coolant outlet temp sensor wire and one T25 torque screw holding the shroud on. We're pulling that out soon. Very important, this return coolant line here is in the way and it tends to break real easy on this end where it's clamped down. So let's remove these two upper radiator hose connections as well to make more clearance for the fan to come out. After unclipping it, I pull the hose out just enough so I see this first ring, then I shove my rivet prior in there and carefully wedge it and work my way around. So at this point, I haven't yet removed the upper radiator hose and pushed it out of the way yet, but I'm going to assume that you have. We don't want to break the return coolant line off when we do this job. Let's move forward. The last thing to remove this, uh, remove this fan is you see the tab underneath the hose here? Pull on it and pull up on the fan for removal. To remove the fan shroud, if you have to, remove the coolant TEM sensor to keep the wires out of your way. You might run into trouble a little bit later there. And the tabs on the side of the shroud bump into things, so you have to angle it out like so. Okay, now it's time to start removing the radiator. First, unclip and release the lower radiator hose. Easier said than done. I'll show you how I do that after. Unclip and release the after cooler hose on the bottom. And on the other side, the bottom hose is screwed on with the T25 Torx. Remove that and pull the hose. Oh look, another eight-legged creeper. Let me squish it. And I still gotta remove this upper radiator hose, but you are already supposed to have done that. If you haven't done that now, then do it now. And uh, this radiator comes forward at the top and then up and out. Removing the lower radiator hose can be really difficult sometimes. This is where I find it extremely handy to have a giant pry bar tool such as the one I have here. I think I bought this thing at Sears. What I do is I'll butt it up against the metal radiator flange only, only, as you see I'm doing here, and the end rests up against the middle of the hose. Then I'll slowly and carefully pry it in small increments, working my angles, working around the hose as much as I can to carefully work it off. It can be hard work. And lastly, before we remove the radiator, we have to remove two T25 Torxes at the top. There, and on both sides. As you can see, I broke the radiator there. Focus! Now, there's some basic instructions for this radiator, at least. I know if you have a bear, one of my parts guys tells me they have caps on the bottom, which means instead of draining it from the plugs, BMW says release the hose which attaches at the thermostat. But in my case, with my arrangement, automatic and after cooler, all I had to do was uninstall the plug on the right side, right side of your screen, and replace it with a long version plug. Again, it only turns about 90 degrees or so. Oh yeah, install the screw plug bit in as well. Don't forget to tighten that up too. I didn't even bother with the O-rings. Before we install the radiator, we got to transfer these clips over to the new one. And let me show you how I do that. I grab my screwdriver, wedge it in here, pull this tab up, and simultaneously press this thing out towards the back and slide it into the new one. And finally, the bleeding process. BMW says this is necessary. Now, I know a guy who avoids this and still bleeds the old school way. And as far as I know, he's still getting away with it. But I can't recommend it. And if you want to go that route, do so at your own risk. I'm not responsible. For all you do-it-yourselfers out there who don't have a multimeter lying around and don't want to buy a battery charger or jumper like mine, for instance, another informal method might be to just access the test functions menu in the instrument cluster to keep an eye on your battery's voltage during the procedure. Don't let it drop below... 
say 11.8 volts maximum or you could wind up not being able to start the car and needing a jump but as long as the pump cycles for around 12 minutes and you're able to read out the menu at the same time it should be worth a try if you're interested i haven't tried it because i have a multimeter and a jumper so again do so at your own risk let me show you how i do it with my jumper now after you have everything back together and pretend i put everything back together here for demonstration sake except the cap of course let's move the cap out of the way First, you're going to loosen up the bleeder vent screw a couple turns. That's where the air escapes when you're filling. Next, we fill the reservoir slowly with half approved coolant and half water. The float's going to rise to warn you, and you want to fill it to the lower edge of the reservoir's neck. It's about where the bottom of my finger is here. Then I hook up my jumper, or you can hook up your battery charger if you have one and know how to use it. There's the negative post, and here's the positive post. Positive goes on first and comes off last. Now let's go inside the car, insert the key, and without your foot pressing the brake pedal, push the start-stop button. Turn your heat all the way up, both sides and then your fan speed to the lowest setting without turning it off. And last, press the accelerator pedal and hold it down for 10 seconds. Don't start the car. Obviously the engine shouldn't be running or else the car would accelerate and run into something here. So then over the silence you should be able to hear your electric water pump running. It should cycle different speeds and turn on and off for about 12 minutes. Set a timer. After approximately 12 minutes the pump will stay off and then you can open the cap on the reservoir and top it off until the liquid raises the float's bottom ball up to six millimeters above the rim. Then tighten the cap back up and check underneath the car for leaks. And that's it. If you ain't leaking, you finished. Congratulations.